Hi, everyone. Marshall, Budget Guy RC, <clears throat> here for another talk. I changed it up on the uh, name of the talk. I changed it from Tuesday RC Talk to just Tuesday Hobby Talk, you know, because we talk a lot about fishing on here. We talk about gaming on here, you know. We talk fishing, we talk gaming, and we talk, you know, RC, so that's why I switched it up. What's up, Massive Clouds? Good to have you here, my friend. Trying to stay warm. That's what's up. <laughs> it went from that pretty day that you saw where I ran the boat to boo. And I do mean bro. Yeah. It's supposed to get down to, I think, 27 degrees tonight, which is minus, I think, minus 2.77 degrees Celsius or some, some mess like that. I'm like, 27 degrees. I'm like, if you're going to be that cold, at least give me the white snow to look at. Cause then I could charge up one of my four wheel drives and go play in the snow a little bit. Went fishing in 15 degree weather the other day and my eyelids and lines froze up. Yeah, man. I used to do that. I used to go down to what they call the uh, spillway, like a dam fishing for uh stripers and uh crappy. And I'd go down there and I didn't matter how cold it was. I could go, I could handle it. Uh, but as I got older, it got, man, when I'd get down there and that wind off that water, because it would be like 10 mile an hour, 15, 20 mile an hour winds, and come up off that water, and it's just like, uh-uh, no. After about an hour, I'd be like, uh-uh, we ain't catching nothing, I'm out of here, bye. <laughs> I'd load up and head to the house. I mean, even if using the live bait, and I'd just come home and put extra batteries in my, my uh, bubble maker to, you know, aerator to keep my... Men of the live, and I just like set them out in the cold with the aerator going just to help keep them alive, you know. Yeah, 19 mile an hour winds, and if it's 15 degrees out there, you're already like you basically with wind chill minus zero, you know, you're down to zero. I was fine, but couldn't throw my bait casters out laughing out loud. Yeah, because if you if your hands are cold, say so you were you were good, hands, feet, everything. Because I know the main things you got to do, you got to keep your head warm, you got to keep your hands warm, and you got to keep your feet warm. Because I I'm gonna tell you, I don't know how uh the pickerel hunter, I don't know how he does it with his feet, because he puts on them rubber galoshes, and then steps out there in the water. So he can throw out better. I'm like, as cold as it can be, you figure if it's 10 degrees outside and you're standing in water, you're standing in a pond, that's got to be coming through them galoshes unless he's got some kind of heated socks or something or unless he's doubling up on layers of clothing. I don't see how he stands in that water because I don't care even if you got rubber galoshes on because I know I put on rubber galoshes when I would go outside and do like in the snow because my shoes wasn't, you know, quite tall enough for it not to come up over my shoes. And I put them rubber galoshes on with like one pair of socks and I'd be out there like oh, 30 minutes to an hour. And then it felt like I had frostbite on my toes. I was like, eh, no. Nah. I forgot the rubber galoshes when we moved here and I forgot to bring them. So now I can't step in the edge of the water, step in the creek or you know, in the lake very far because the actual like hiking boots I got, they're nowhere near as high. I picked up about $400 in tackles from Tackle Warehouse, and I'm so anxious for a warmer day to try some of it out. <laughs> yeah, that's like, you know, when I took the boat down there the other day, I'm sitting there looking at, looking at the water and everything, and a guy comes by in a boat, and I see him fishing, and so I just wait to start my video because, you know, I didn't want to catch nobody in the video. You see him. You see a view of him as he goes past. Yeah, it ain't worth getting your feet wet when it's that cold. No. 
Because once you get a part of your body wet when it's that cold, it is so difficult to get warm back up. Now, me and my buddies years ago, we also used to build a small fire. We'd go fishing near the edge of the lake or, you know, near a dam. We'd get us a little bit of wood together. We'd throw it down, in, you know, in an open space back behind us, about, say, you know, 10 feet behind us. And we'd put a few rocks around it, and we'd light us up a small little fire. And then we'd just step over there and get close to the fire, put our hands up over the fire, get warmed up, and we'd go back to fishing. But it just got, as I got older, you know, it's like you're, you get colder easier. And it just, some days I step out the door and I go, uh, uh-uh. I was honestly surprised the boat never tipped over with the camera on it. To be honest, as fast as I was turning at some, at some of the times, I was surprised because I would go out and then I would just whip it back around and come back. And I'm like, wow. Okay, if it can handle that one, it can go a little bit more. And I would put, I pushed it just a little bit more on some of the turns later on just to see if they could handle them. And I, st I forgot that, hey, you don't have this camera in a waterproof case. If this thing flips, your camera's done for. This is that Firefly 6S that you like the video on. And when I walked down there to the lake and showed you my fishing spot, that's that Firefly 6S that I use when I do my kayak videos that I put on my hat. And then I had on my hat that day I walked down there and I showed everybody my fishing spot. It ain't waterproof unless it's in its case. But I thought the case would be, would it be in that high? I'm like, okay, it's going to be bad enough with the camera being up that high. But adding that heavy plastic ca outer case into it, it may tip over. And then I end up, you know, got to get, go back home, get my kayak, come back down there and try to go out and get my boat. So I was like, I'm going to chance it. I'm going to run it without the waterproof case. You know, since the battery dies after 15 to 30 minutes anyway, my luck, I would have flipped the boat and it would have taken water in. Yeah. Well, if you look at the video, when I go out there and I'm running it around, I come back this way and you see a fisherman. When the boat's pointing right behind him, there's a fisherman out there. What I had done is he come across there. I had just set the boat in, and he started across. So I just left it sitting there. And then as he got past me where I knew I couldn't see nothing but the back of him, then I turned the camera on and started running it because I didn't want to have to you know, bleep nobody's face out on camera, you know, that might not want to be on there. And I asked him about, does he ever catch anything? And he says, yeah, Fred, fishing from his boat. What's going on, brother? I was just telling him when I ran that boat, there was a guy down there fishing and I asked him, does he ever catch anything in that spot? And he was telling me, yeah, all the time, but that's only fishing from a boat throwing at all the banks on both sides. As you come up in there, you come up, uh, massive cloud says, what's up? Wishing I was fishing. But yeah, when you come up in there, he fishes both sides of the bank as he's coming through. He'll come up into that cove area. He'll fish down one side of the bank, and then he says he'll turn. He'll go back upside and throw it out the other, or he'll come down the middle of it slowly and just let the boat barely drift, and he'll just throw out both sides like that. He tells me he catches fish up in there all the time as long as he's out in his boat. He said he doesn't do much from the bank. So I'm going to try probably – Next time, I'm going to probably still try the bank. I got those couple things I wanted to, you know, use. But I can't wait to put my kayak down in there one day when it's a warmer day. I'm not getting out there in 32-degree weather and putting a kayak on the water, and I'm just not doing it. <laughs> I'd rather walk down there and stand down there with a thick coat on, some, you know, put me a beanie hat on, something like this. And stand down there on the bank and fish for about an hour. I just know, I just now got the modification. You went live. <laughs> I caught a 14 pound blue cat last Friday. Wow. Nice, brother. Nice. Now, this is, this is the main thing I don't like about the, uh, the boat, the boat that y'all saw. This is the radio for it. This is the radio for that boat. As you can see, you got this long antenna you got to pull out for it. 
because it's not 2.4 gigahertz. And as you can see right here, that lets you know it's not 2.4 gigahertz because it's a FM channel that it's on and it's got a matching crystal down inside the boat. Yeah. See, you go left and right with this one and then you give it throttle here. But now, the only thing I don't like about this, I wish it had a 2.4 gigahertz radio and I wish it had reverse. This one and the boat, the way it's set up, with the way the boat's set up with the ESC, the radio and receiver and everything, it's only forward. You got forward, left, and right. There is no reverse. So if you accidentally run up on a bankment or hit it, get stuck up against the log or something, and you want to back back up and start off again, you ain't doing it with this. I would have either had to holler for that fisherman guy to turn around and come back and retrieve my boat for me, or I would have had to just leave it in the water, come home, get my kayak, get it down there as quick as I could and go out there and try to get it. But that day, man, I get down there and I'm, I got the boat out there and I'm running the boat and I'm looking at the water. It would suck. I'm looking at the water and I'm going, man, this is such a beautiful day. I should have done fishing with those other two plugs I was talking about today. And I should have saved this for another day. But then I'm like, yeah, my luck, it would have been raining or it would have been 24 degrees, and it's so much easier to rupture the RC material when it's cold. And I was like, going across those waves and hitting them like that with the boat, I'm like, my luck, it would have ruptured the hull on a colder day. You know? So it was a good time to put it out there. But that boat's like, it's like two and a half foot long. I mean, it, it's a big boat. Now, if I if I went and got looked and found some new electronics and was to put new electronics in it, I could probably put new guts in it and make it where it goes forward, reverse, you know, and everything. But for what you're going to spend putting the electronics in it to make it go forward, reverse, left and right, you could probably buy a little bit smaller boat, like say a 17 instead of that 28. You could probably put a 17 out there. That already has forward and reverse you know and it would be a 17 inch boat something like that you know but i definitely would love to have one with forward and reverse that way you ain't as worried i mean some of them they make now you you flip over you turn the steering wheel left and right real quick and give it a little juice and they flip back over and you just keep going so they're really hard to lose but it ain't that one <laughs> I tell you what that what that boat is, that Neptune 28. If you go to Harbor Freight, if you have a Harbor Freight where you live, you can buy that boat. I didn't know that when I bought it, because that ain't where I bought it at. When I bought that boat, I had bought uh, a used uh, chassis, an RC chassis from a guy. It was a old low C chassis. And uh, I think it was a low C triple X or something like that. I don't forgot exactly what it was. And it's like a truggy chassis. And I had bought it. And when I bought it, he had told me while I was down there, he also had a boat he wanted to sell. No, I'm not voting. And he told me he had a boat for sale. Live bluegills, what you caught the cat on. Sweet, but he told me he said, I got a boat for sale. Uh, and I I got the RC that day. I looked at the boat and I said, Let me think about it tonight. And I'll give you a call tomorrow. And the next day I called him back. He told me what he would take for it low bottom dollar, you know. I think which was like, I think it was 30 bucks. He said he'd take for it. I'm like, Well, 30 bucks. I'll go get it. I drove down to the dude's house, picked the boat up for 30 bucks. I went out and ran it where I used to live. And my girlfriend was down there with me at the time. She even ran it and liked it. Brought it home. And then one day I went to Harbor Freight. And I looked on the shelf in Harbor Freight. And there sat that exact boat for $50, I think it is, brand new. It's a $50 boat brand new. If I'm not, That's what it used to be. That might not be what it is now. But it used to be $50. And 
So I was like, well, $50 brand new. No. I, I don't know your Dixie Rick. But that's the battery that Neptune 28 runs in it. Which is ba basically a six cell NIM pack. It's only like 1800, 1800 milliamp hours. There it is. 1800 milliamp hours. And it's only like a six cell nickel metal pack. So you imagine if that boat would have had something like a a seven cell nickel metal in it, or if it would have had a lipo in there, I would get more run time. Plus, it would actually be a decent amount faster. You take a seven cell and stick in a boat that normally runs a six cell. I don't know, but for what I paid for the boat, I'm actually considering it. I'm actually considering putting me a piece of Velcro on this battery, putting me a piece of Velcro back there in the, in the boat. Because, see, this one has, this one has ends you can change. You can add an adapter onto it. See, this one can run multiple ends. And that right now, I've got it as an EC. EC3, I think it is. I've got it for running. This is for my ECX Torment four-wheel drive. And this is a 3,000 mile. And what I was thinking about, since the boat wasn't with $35, I was thinking about giving it a chance one time and just taking this and adding on the piece to make it work and run on a Tamiya plug or Tamiya plug, whatever you want to call it. Like this. And everything and then put this in the boat and run it on a seven sail to see what kind of speed it'll give it because a seven sail or a lipo would really pump that thing up i believe if you didn't burn up the esc but i did break a prop out there i had to come home and replace it with my other prop yeah i don't know I, it does, being that it's an older setup boat with a you know old style FM radio it probably can't handle a lipo so it, it may not even handle a 7 cell it may fry the ESC like I said I I believe you'd have to put a to be honest you'd probably have to go with a 1 cell because I, I just believe a 2S would fry it but then again 2S might be better than putting, because this is hitting it with 8.4 volts. This would hit it with 8.4 right off the bat. And this is a seven cell. So yeah, you could probably put, you could probably put a 2S LiPo in there. If you put your, you know, LiPo alert, you know, put your one of those alarms on there. And yes, Heavy putt guy, I have seen your video on YouTube. I commented on it, told you it was a nice run, and you clicked like on it, on me watching your video. Am I upgrading the boat battery because I get to do the same thing in February? Oh, I don't know whether I'm upgrading it. We were just chatting on, did I think, you know, a bigger battery would, if it would pump the volume up a little bit make it a, just a little bit quicker you know and give you know give it longer run time of course and i was talking about putting a seven cell in there but see well see i could just go this route i could just do this okay this is 1800 milliamp hour
I could just run that one in it, put some Velcro on this one, just to increase the run time. 7.2 volt, 3,000 milliamp hours. 3,000 versus 1,800, you know, that would definitely give me, you know, three, four, five more minutes. But if you just want to increase the speed, just want it to be faster, I would either say you go up to the seven cell nickel or either throw a 2S lipo in it. But if you don't have a lipo cutoff, which I'm sure it don't because it being, you know, older electronics in it with FM, I don't know if it would handle even I don't even know if it would handle a, a 2S lithium ion, you know, the little ion batteries. I don't even know if it would handle a 2S in that because of the electronics. But, like, see, that's a 2S, 25C burst, 1800. And... I don't think the electronics will handle that, but the electronics may not handle the seven cell. Cause you think about it. Lithium ion or lipo 7.4 volts is all this is pushing. This is pushing seven, four. It's running on seven, two right now. Seven, four is not that big of a jump. So a small lipo, as long as you put an alarm on there so you don't mess up your lipo or explode it. You know, you don't want to burn up your lipo either. If you just got out there and ran for like five minutes with a lipo, yeah, you'd probably get more speed. You know, and just run it for five minutes. You probably wouldn't hurt nothing. But I'm afraid that this, because it jumps all the way up to 8.4 volts, There it is. 8.4 volts. This might do more damage than a 2S lipo. Just think about it. It's running 7.2. You jump up to 7.4. That ain't that big of a jump. But to jump all the way to 8, jump over 8 volts, you're going to be jumping up to 8.4. That's why when you put one of these 7-cell seven, seven nickels in a truck, you watch the takeoff speed. A lot of times, they're better than the lipo in the beginning, than, than a 2S lipo in the beginning. They just don't last as long as a lipo. My uh, my Traxxas Scully came with a 7-cell nickel. And that thing wheelies, when you first take off in it, it wheelies like for the first couple minutes. And then low it later, it gets where it don't want to wheelie. But a buddy of mine has his Traxxas Scully set up with a 2S LiPo, he says he can't get it to wheelie. His will run 10, 15 minutes longer than mine will, but he can't get his to wheelie because he's running a 2S LiPo. He's not pushing over 8 volts through it right off the get-go. Is the ESC your standard ESC? I think it's running like little, I want to say it's running like little 370s in it. I want to say it's running little 370s in it. And it just looks like some little knockoff brand ESC. And you can see the little crystal thing stick. And I'm like, you know, it's just your basic, what they would run in your older stuff, you know. You think about your older boats. All your older boats and stuff all had this. and were, It's channel 7 on the FM. I think it's a 07, see, FM. That's what band it runs on. Now, see, the reason everything went 2.4 gigahertz is because people would run these and they'd be outside or be out at the lake running them. And if a lot of people lived near them that turned on the radio or turned on this or turned on that, the FM from it would interfere with this. And you'd see people's RCs going crazy. So they went from the AMs and the FMs up to the 2.4s. That's how a lot of your uh, nitros got away from people. They'd be out there running them with the old FM transmitter like this, and somebody would turn on their FM radio nearby, and the car would go veer off to the left, and they couldn't control it until that person changed, you know, cut the radio off. So it was that's the only bad thing about them. It made me scared I was going to be running it end up in that cove, and a couple of people in the house would turn on the FM radios 
and it would go crazy, especially when I first got it. But yeah, it's, it's just a standard. It's a standard little cheap ESC. My battery that I get to update is a 7.2 6800 mile. Oh, it's definitely going to make it run longer, that's for sure. Yeah, yours is channel 8 FM, mine's channel 7. Yeah, but I, I haven't had any trouble with anything interfering with it. I'm just saying that's a potential risk. That's why everything went up to 2.4 gigahertz. That way you don't have that long ass that long ass antenna to break off. Plus everything went to 2.4 gigahertz. And that way when people turn their radios on or, you, or use a remote to turn their stereo on in the house, it doesn't interfere with your boat or your RC car. That's why things went to 2.4 gig. But, yeah, upgrade, especially, you're really going to get more runtime by jumping up to 6,800 mile. I mean, you're going to get some runtime. And if you bought you one of those little LiPo alarms, I think they're, what, $8, 10 for a little cheap LiPo alarm, and you just hook that up in there, and you hook a small 2S on there, like, say, oh, 2,000 milliamp hours, that would still give it a little more punch because it'd be 7.4 volts you're throwing at it. And just put a small ma in there. Put like an 1800 2S in there. Like that one I just showed. Put something like this in there. Like I said, that's only an 1800 a little zippy 2S. But, and it's a 25C burst, so it would do something. But realistically, I've got a couple of these. They're 1,500 milliamp hour, them Lion batteries. These go to my uh, Thunder Tiger 112th scale Toyota Helix. And these, if you could change over that end, coming off the everything, off the electronics, change it over to a Tracks this style, which I don't need to do that. I actually could run this. I've got a, uh, I've got one of these converters, one of these little plugs. So I could take this what's up, Bull Gear RC. See, I could take this lithium ion, 1500 milliamp. I could take that, put that plug on it, run that over to the boat, and I could actually try a 2S in it, a 2S lithium ion. But if I want to make sure I don't damage the battery either, I need to hook me a battery alarm right here. That way, if it starts beeping, you bring the boat back in immediately so you don't damage the battery or have it go boom. But yes, this being a, a 7.4 volt could actually burn up the ESC in that little thing. So, you know, you're taking a chance anytime you do a battery change on something with the stock electronics. But see, I believe it can handle it because this is 7.2. 18, 1800 milliamp hours, 7.2 volt. This is 7.4 volt, 1500. And I believe it would give you just a, just a touch more speed. It may not give you a lot more, but a touch more. And as long as you put that lipo alarm on there, I believe this might be all right. That's why I said I'm tempted to try it. Because I've already had the boat a couple of years. I bought the boat used. So even if it kills the ESC in the boat. If it kills the electronics. Hey I've got my $35 use out of the boat. $30, $35, whatever it was I paid for it. I've got my use out of it. Because I bought it used for like $30, $35. The boat had only been ran like once or twice the guy said. So I'll get my, I got my money out of it. You know, for that price. 
Now, for $50, if I'd went to Harbor State Freight and bought it brand new for $50 when it had it at that price, no two two or three runs off of it, I wouldn't say I got quite got my money yet. I probably wouldn't try this little battery thing. But I really think going up to a 7 cell on those electronics, which is 8.4 volts, you're going from 7.2 volts to 8.4. That might be too big of a jump for it. After I upgrade the battery, I will make a video that so that you can see how fast it will go. Maybe upgrade the propellers to three blade steel. I'll give it a look. But sometimes you have to watch those propellers. Because sometimes the ones you swap out to, the curvature and the way they're made, they don't give it as much speed as the original props. You saw mine in the video moving across the water. That is the original props on it. There's no mods been done to the boat. The only thing I had done to that boat was put the camera mount on it and put my camera up there. And my camera wasn't waterproof either. It wasn't in a waterproof case. It wasn't waterproof. I just took a chance. I decided to live dangerously because I wanted to put up a, a good, clear video without that heavy case up there making it want to rot one way or the other. But I'm, st I'm thinking about getting me something like a 17-inch 17, 17 boat. One that at least has forward and reverse. One that's 2.4 gigahertz. So that way, you know, at least if you run up into some brush, you can back right back out. But I broke that prop. I'm not sure. Tomorrow is officially two years since my first video. Congratulations, my friend. I got to go watch that video you put up a couple days ago where you show where you got the RC body to turn your SEX24 into the little wraith. I got to go watch that because that looks very interesting. I wouldn't mind doing something like that because that looks pretty cool. Of course, I wouldn't go with the same color one you went with. I'd pick a different color one so that way, you know, wouldn't be an exact copy of yours. But yeah, that was pretty cool. Now, anybody that's here that fishes, I finally got them in. I'm just now opening it. I ordered these December the 19th. Oh, I like the look of these. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna step away and I'm going to cut this open. That was nice footage from the video you made. Thank you. And I also hit 73 subscribers. Congrats. Yeah, man. I, what it is is the camera battery has done got old. The battery to the camera. I made styrene body panels for mine and painted them so yours will be different. Cool. Oh. Uh, heavy putt guy. What it is is that camera is like three years old. The battery is so old in it that now I only get 15 to 30 minutes of video out of it when I'm shooting 1080 at 60 frames per second. And so I was like, okay, if I put it in a waterproof case, that's just going to add more more weight. I want to make it easier to tip over when I turn. I'm like, I don't think there's going to be much water splashing up on it. I don't think it's going to flip. So I'm going to take a chance. And I just decided to run it that day like that. Now the video you see of me looking down at the boat, showing you the boat saying, hey, this is what I'm going to run today. I shot that with my iPhone. I shot the video when I first walked down there and I show you the water. And then I look down and show you the boat. That was shot on my iPhone. And then I switch over, you know, in the footage you see of the boat going across the lake. That, of course, is from the boat. And on, on the back of the boat. And then I come home and I put the two of them together on my computer and edited it and did what I needed to do. I'm going to go get my scissors. And open this up so I can pull one out and show it a little bit closer. 
because these look really cool. I had never seen these anywhere, and I uh, I saw them on Wish.com. Phones will become DSLR soon. Wow. What's up, man? Long time no holla. From both of us. I'll be right back. Good day. Now, like I was saying, for all the guys that do fishing that, you know, watch this every week. These were them ones I ordered off of Wish.com. I ordered them back on December the 9th. They finally got here. I'm going to be trying these out. I'll probably just take them and hook them on like behind a jig head. And run them that way. Run the jig through them. And let this be the trailer behind the jig. Until I get some, some smaller hooks. And then I'll just use a smaller hook. Since these are small. Yeah, like a new penny color. I like the color of them. I like the looks of them. <laughs> rubber. <laughs> That's what they smell like. They smell like new rubber. <laughs> I'm not eating one to find out how they taste, okay? Because I'm pretty sure they don't taste as good as they look. So, But I do like the look of them. And I figure if I take one of my jig heads when I'm fishing and I run this up on the back of the jig head and have the hook sticking out, say, from the backside up here at the top, that way it makes them more weedless and less easy to get hung up. Run them on what run a couple of them that way and then take and get me some smaller hooks or some small new jig heads that don't have anything on them and just get me some jig heads and run through these. But that's what I'm gonna fish these with is mainly like jig heads through them. And it comes. Two, four, six. It's like eight of them in a pack. But that's the pack that came in. And there's eight of them in there, so I couldn't resist it. It was one it was one of those deals where they were having a special and this was one of the deals. It was free. All you had to do is click claim. And then pay like, I think it was $1.83 for shipping. So I paid less than $2 for eight of these. So I was like, well, I can't beat that. I was on wish.com. I was like, I can't beat that. So I had got these. So I ended up paying like a buck 83 for these. And I was like, well, you can't really beat that. And I hadn't seen anything like that in Walmart. You know, and I'd been in Super Walmart looking at their fishing stuff. And I hadn't seen anything like that. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping to slap it on a jig and rip some lips. <laughs> if I can if I can get some hits with that behind a jig, then I'm at least happy. I know, hey, okay, I've got some hits with it. It was worth the money. And then once you catch one, then you go, okay, it was worth it. Once you catch a fish with it or get one on 
with it. Even if you lose it, you're like, okay, I know it does something. It's got some potential. Right now, it's just a pretty looking rubber bait, and you hope it's going to work. That's the way it is right now. And like I said, it's cold here, so clearly says it. Coffee. But yeah, that that boat video, even though it's an older model boat, it ain't as fast as all the ones that run lipos. It don't even have reverse, you know, like the newer boats do. And it's still running on the old FM style radio. But you know, it actually gets a real good, decent range on it for it being FM. You know, because I ran it out, went left, and went way down. And the only reason I turned around and came back because that guy was still fishing down there, and I didn't want to get up in his area where he was throwing out, you know, and be a nuisance. So I stopped about, oh, probably 30, 40, 50 feet away, you know, at least from him, spun it around and came back when I saw he was still out there fishing. I'd lean out and look and see if he was still there, you know, and then I'd turn it around and bring back so I didn't get too close to him. Oh, different frequency. You get longer range to 2.4. Just 2.4, you don't generally worry about people's radios and stuff messing with it. All right, Master Cloud, you say you'll be back in 10 minutes. All right, my friend. But yeah, I still love that boat. I mean, even though it was, you know, even though it is a, you know, just a Harbor Freight where you can buy it at, you go to your local Harbor Freight. I think it was like $50 brand new two or three years ago. No, I'm afraid I'm going to hook on to something stronger than what the boat can handle. This is a, this is a, a seven. It runs on FM seven is what it runs on. So I don't know. I don't know how strong the frequency is. The FM frequency on this one is or not, but I know it does. If I get out there on a lake and there's not a bunch of people around, or there's not a lot of houses right there. I don't have really any trouble. I'm just afraid if everybody turns on their stereos to FM, then it might, you know, glitch on me. But luckily that guy being on the lake that day, I knew I could just holler at him because he wasn't that far away. I could holler at him and say, Hey man, you do me a favor. My boat went cuckoo and ran offshore or my boat's hung up over there. Could you grab it for me? I knew he would have, you know, slow trolled over there and got it out for me and put it back where it would go again. Either that, I would have came home and got my kayak, went back down there and launched my kayak in the same spot. And then I would just paddled out there with my kayak and grabbed it up, put it up in my kayak, you know, brought it back to the bank to see what the issue was. But now when I lived at the other place, when I went out to that lake and went, I had a paddle boat. So I was like, if I lose it out here while I'm, running it i'll go home get my girlfriend to help me load the paddle boat and up in the back of the truck and i would have went back down there and went out with my paddle boat and got it paddle boat got overwhelming because it was five people and it was just so much harder to control just one person sitting in the middle pedal pedaling it you ever slow troll a pork chop through a dog kennel no <laughs> i don't think i would try that my new video is uploading right now, so be ready when it comes. Oh, yeah, if I ain't gaming, I'll give it a look. If I ain't gaming at that time. Because like I was telling everybody on here, when I'm, on, when I'm not on YouTube now, you'll catch one. Yeah. <laughs> and the other ones might get jealous because they didn't get nothing and come for you. But uh, what I was saying, Pebby Pet Pet Guy, is I may not be on YouTube when it comes out, but I'll keep a lookout for it because I play online games when I'm not, you know, doing YouTube and stuff. And I play uh, Game of Thrones online. I've got another one called Vikings War of Clans that I play online. And then I play PlayStation 3, 
and PlayStation 4. I don't play them online, but I play them. So I do gaming when I'm not doing YouTube, when I'm not out fishing, when I'm here. Yeah. I played uh, what, Friday the 13th the other night. I played that some. I've got uh, Until Dawn in the PlayStation 4 right now. I just up I just uploaded some new content for it and just got it all installed. And that'll be the next game I jump on on my PlayStation 4 will be that until dawn. But yeah, man, it's cold. Like I said, it's supposed to get down to like 27 degrees tonight. It's gonna be like minus 2.7 Celsius or some mess like that. Wait, are you a gamer? Because I'll, yeah, I got a PlayStation 3. I've got a PlayStation 4 that I play on. I'm not online with them two, the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4. I just play games, you know, on them here at the house. The online gaming I do is a Game of Thrones. It's a, it's a through Steam. I got an account with Steam and I do Game of Thrones online. And I also do Vikings War Clan. I do that online through a company called Polarium. So I play a couple of online video games there. They're like strategy, build, and fight games. You know. But yes, you heard me right. I play PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. So I like to fish. I like to do RC. And I like to play game systems. And I like to play online games. Computer games. So, yeah, that's why I listed tonight's talk instead of just listening it as RC. I listed it as Tuesday Hobby Talk. You know, I put that in there. Because I've been listing all of them as just an RC talk. But then I've been doing, you know, a lot more on there. But yeah, I went outside to take the dogs out earlier and it was like nine mile an hour wind and it was already down to like, I think it was like 34 at that time. And oh man, with that nine mile an hour wind, it was actually a real field. They said it was like 26 out there. I have a Wii with Baja 1000 and maybe I might vlog on that game. Cool. If you do, I'll give it a look. If you do that, I'll give it a look. Like I said, man, I don't mind looking at people's stuff. It's all about trying to help each other out. My son, he has a Wii. My son has the Wii. He has the GameCube. And he has my old PlayStation 2. Excuse me. He has all three of those. Hello. Plus, uh, we got him one of those uh, Sega systems the hat that comes with a bunch of games already built into it. We got him one of those, too. He got one of those for Christmas. Well, his mom got him that. His mom got him a, a, a Sega that comes with games already on it, so you ain't you ain't got to change them out. You just go through the menu and pick a bunch of different Sega games. Me, I got him a computer for Christmas. I got him a laptop for Christmas because the one he was on was like turtle speed. He'd been on it for like the last four years. So I got him a new a newer laptop than what he had. So that way, you know. He wouldn't be so slow when he's watching people's videos and stuff. Because he likes to watch gaming videos and stuff like that on YouTube. And I was like, you know, well, his his run's kind of slow and choppy. So I was like, he needs to update. So I got him one for Christmas. And like I said, she got him the new Sega game that come with like, I think it was like a bunch of games on it. I can't remember the exact count of the games that are on it. She got him that. 
So, but yeah, he's he likes gaming too. Like I said, because he does have the Wii, the GameCube, the PlayStation 2, and that Sega system that he just got. Yeah, I, I need to get me. I need to get me an Xbox controller. Because I got on a, <clears throat> I got on a game the other night that I, somebody told me to install and check out. And when I got on the game, I'm sitting there and it's WESD to move. And then it was all these other, all your number keys, all your letter keys, all of them did something different in the menu. And I'm sitting there going, I'm just trying this game out, you know, at that time. So I deleted the game. I'm like, I get me a controller. I get me a controller to hook up to my laptop. Then I'll get that game again. I'll download it again. Because it was a free download. It's free to play. So I was like, I'll download it again. It was on Steam anyway. I use Xbox One remote, Bluetooth, to my cell phone and iPad. Cool. I was told I could get the, the, Xbox, the, the Xbox remote that hooks up by USB and just plug one of those in to a USB port on the side of my laptop and use that because being that it's, you know, made by Microsoft and of course the laptops, you know, Microsoft stuff in it, but all right, mate, it's good to see you. You have a great night now. Take care. Everybody, that was a epic RC video productions. He's bouncing out. He was telling everybody to have a good one. Now, if y'all want to see good first person views, that's the channel to check out for good FPV. He does some great FPV work. Yes, I play old Xbox 360 games on my PC with the remote, with the wire. Cool. That's what I'm thinking about doing, just getting me like an Xbox 360 controller with the wire. Plug that into the USB. And bam. There's a lot of games, you know, that, that would open up so I didn't have to use the keyboard for everything. Because keyboard... If, you, if you're fighting something and it's coming at you and you're trying to remember the, all these different keys, <laughs> it can get you wiped out. Because on that game, it was a wild boar that came at me. And I was trying to remember the key for getting something equipped real quick. And that wild boar just wiped me out. No, it has to be an Xbox One remote, not the 360 one. Okay. Thanks for the info. I'll look into that. I'll either go on eBay and get one, or either I'll go to like GameStop. You know, wire plugs in on top of remote. Okay. I'll look into that. I'll definitely have to look into that in the future. Like I said, I'll either go through eBay. Or I'll jump up to GameStop one day. Thank you, my Superman. Yep. Normally, I have it on a fishing cap. I got one that says, you can kiss my bass. And I got another one that says, shut up and fish. That's my two fishing caps that I wear. But this one, I had uh, went to a concert one week. And I was like, you know, I want something different. You know, it was the first ever concert I'd ever been to. And I was like, I want something different for this. And I was in Walmart and I saw this cap. I'm like, cool. And at the same time, I picked me up a, a Marvel. Like, you know, it's got a bunch of the different Avengers and different people on it. Picked me up a T-shirt. Bought me a new pair of jeans. So that night when I went to the concert, you know, new hat, new shirt, new jeans. You know. As Ric Flair would say, 
styling and profiling that night, you know, with all new stuff on. But thanks for the compliment. Yeah, I'd never seen one this color with the black, with the blue on the Superman until I saw this one. I was like, oh, that's different. I have never seen that before. And it's solid all the way around. Doesn't have the split at the back. It doesn't have the Velcro. It's just stretch. You know, one of those one-size-fits-all type caps. But I like it because it's just solid all the way around the back. I ain't got to worry about that Velcro hanging when I'm putting my hoodie on. Like I put my jacket on and throw my hood up over my head. And my other ones, the, the Velcro on the back right here will catch it. Man, the Ford dealership gave me a couple of hats. And my wife kept one. <laughs> hey, I'd be proud that she wanted a hat. Most women won't even put on a hat. Most women, you don't see them wearing no cap. They won't wear no ball cap. <laughs> Most women don't like ball caps. Not the women I've been around. They're generally more of, they'll wear the, the hoodie and put the hoodie up over the head. That's just in the cold, you know. Like they go outside and it's snowing, they'll throw a hoodie up over the head, you know, to keep warm. My niece, she loves working on cars. She used to love helping me. When I'd work on cars, she'd, you know, hand me tools and stuff. She didn't wear a baseball cap. She would wear stocking cap type thing like this, or she would wear a hoodie, throw the hood up over her head. But she wouldn't wear no baseball cap. Laughing out loud, she kept the one that says Ford. Built without your tax dollars. <laughs> uh. So I got to ask, since the Ford dealership gave you a, a couple of hats, was that because you did some work for them? Was that because you were looking at a vehicle? I'll be back in 10 minutes. Cool, my friend. Now, Bull Gear RC videos on the hats you got from the Ford dealership. Is that because you did some work for them? Or is that because you were actually looking at a vehicle? Or did you get you a, a new vehicle? Is that why they gave you the hats? Just curious. Because I know I went to a Ford dealership one time and test drove a car. They didn't give me nothing but a bunch of reasons why I should buy that car. That's all they gave me. Oh, you really should buy this car. You'd really like it. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. That's about the only thing they gave me. But they didn't give me no hats. <laughs> because I bought my wife an Explorer Platinum and myself an F-150. See, that's why you got the hats. <laughs> no wonder you got some hats. Because I know Ford ain't much about giving stuff away. Because, to be honest, my mom, when she was alive, she was a very, very devout person with uh, when it comes to Ford. She really loved her Fords at one time. And she did, had all of her servicing at the time done at Ford dealerships. And they never gave her anything. And I mean, you know, I'm like, wow. As many years as she was loyal to them, you know, getting oil change, getting brake work, getting this and that. And she finally, you know, decided, you know, they're charging me way more than these other guys. And they're not giving nothing, you know, back. Only cost me $100,000 to get a hat. Yeah. <laughs> $100,000 and you could have went to Walmart and bought one that says Ford on the front of it. Or built Ford Tough and probably spent five bucks. <laughs> oh, But, of course, you probably wouldn't have bought the hat. You were just like, oh, free hat. Cool. Whatever. Throw it in the back seat. And then you get home and you're like, wait a minute. I didn't know my wife would want one. That's the one I actually wanted. Yeah, I had a, I had an F-150. I had an F-100. I had two big, big Ford trucks. Unfortunately, I didn't have any luck out of those. My F-100, it was really old. It was a 1970 F-100. And uh, 
it ended up having bad steering issues. So I ended up having to sell it. I pulled the wheels off of it because they were mag wheels. They were nice mag wheels and swapped them over to my F-150 before I sold the F-100. And went to all that trouble swapping the mags over making the F-150 look good. Six months after I got it, the training went out on it. So both them two, steering went out on one like a year after I got it. And the transmission went out on the other one six months after I got it. I bought my truck January the 1st. It has 221 miles on it now. Uh, now, I had an Explorer. I had the, uh, the 01 Explorer Sport. I had that as well. My, I want to say my two, my two best Fords, or three best Fords, was a Ford Galaxy I had, a Ford LTD I had, and probably the one of the best Fords I ever had was my little Ford Ranger. I had two of them. I had two Ford Rangers. They were probably up there at the top of the list. I had a Ford van. Transmission went on it. I had a Ford pickup truck. You know, the F-150 transmission went on it. I had the Explore Sport 2001, and I told them that the transmission was acting wonky. When I'd pull it into gear, it would hesitate before it would go into gear, and they tried to tell me it was natural. I said, well, it wasn't natural for the first 28,000 miles that I drove it, and now all of a sudden it's doing it, and this is, you know, 2,000 miles before the warranty on that free work runs out. That's why you're telling me nothing's wrong with it. Ah, both of the new ones have the twin turbo eco boost. Cool. But yeah. Now here's a surprise. Besides the uh, Ranger, I said, you know, I had a, a Galaxy and an LTD that were pretty good. I also had a Ford Pinto. And that was probably one of the best cars I had in my whole life. A Ford Pinto. Yeah, I said it. I had a night, I had uh, basically the first edition. It was a 1971 Ford Pinto. It was my first car. I drove it to school. I even raced it. I raced against other four-cylinder cars back when I had it. I raced a, a, a six-cylinder Jeep, I think it was. And it actually won. <laughs> I beat a couple of four-cylinder cars. I beat a six-cylinder Jeep in it. And it was just like, I didn't care. It was my Pinto. It was my car. It was my first car, man. You know, you get a first car, you, you think you got the best car in the world. You know, you don't care. It was a emerald green, pretty color. I love I love green, so it was a pretty color. My mom says you can have this Pinto, which you're already driving back and forth to school anyway, or you can have $500 towards your car. I took the Pinto. I was already driving it every day back and forth to school. I had already put a stereo system in it. Because I was driving it. I was like, I'll just take the Pinto. Since I'm driving it anyway. And I then added some speakers and some stereo stuff. So yeah. It's hard to believe one of my best cars I ever owned. Was a, a freaking Ford Pinto. Supposed to have been one of the junkiest cars Ford ever made. Supposed to have been. And it was one of my best. Supposed to blow up if anybody hits you in the rear end. I got rear ended at a red light. They knocked me all the way through the freaking intersection. Didn't explode. Didn't catch on fire. So maybe either I was just lucky. Maybe the man upstairs was looking out for me. I don't know. Oh, man, but it pushed that rear end up. It was only about, on one side, it was only that far away from the tire, from the back tire. After they hit me. I mean, they hit me just. All right, man. Like I said, if I'm not gaming when I get off of here, I'll give it a look. But if I don't look at it tonight, I'll definitely give it a look tomorrow. But yeah. Like I said, as far as Ford trucks go, the best one I ever had was my Ford Rangers. I had two of them. 
and you would have had to drive them off a cliff, I think, to kill them. I traded the last one I had in on a, uh, a little Chevy truck. Well, GMC, same thing. Basically a Chevy S10. But it was the GMC version. The S15 is what they called it. Yeah, he's got a, uh, a few boat videos. Same type of boat I've got. He's got the same type of boat I've got. He's got a few boat videos up and a couple other things, I think. But uh yeah, I just had done. I didn't know I don't know if you've seen it yet, Bullgar. Bull Gear RC videos. My bad. I don't know if you've seen it. I just did a video of my boat. It's a 28 foot, well, 28 inches, like two and a half foot, whatever you want to call it. It's a Neptune 28, is what they call it. It's like I said, about two and a half foot. Runs old radio, old electronics. I did an FPV view. That's the radio system, radio to it. I uh, I did. I put my camera up on top of it. There was only like six k difference between the Ranger and the F one fifty, so I went full size. Yeah, well, I bought mine used, and when I bought my Rangers used, I got them really cheap. Now, if I would have been looking around and found an F100 or an F150 or an F F250 for close to what I paid for the Rangers, I'd have went there. That's what I've always wanted. I've actually always wanted a, an F250. I like some RC drones. I've got like three or four little, little bitty ones that I fly around in the house. I've got, you know, a Traxxas Scully two-wheel drive monster truck. I've got a bunch of trail vehicles that I run. And I've got a uh I've got a, a Sand Rover to me a Sand Rover buggy. So yeah, I've got truck I got RC trucks, cars, and I've got like a few drones, a few quads. This is one of my heavy. This is one of my trail trucks that I bought and customized. ECX Barrage Gen 2. And I bought it. Added the machine gun, the Gatling gun. Added the NOS. Added the hose. Going up here to the motor. Then I added all the stuff in the back. Then I even added tail lights. These actually went to an axial. They were supposed to be like fog lights or headlights. And I took it and put red bulbs and wired it to the back. And then it had orange headlights. And I took it and switched them out to white. And then I made the Cut this out of wood, and then ma made this and put this on there to protect the grill. And then I cut these and sanded these and put them in there. So yeah, I do like some RC drones, and I do like cars. I got a bunch of your smaller ones. Awesome! I used to have an RC four wheel drive rock crawler. Ah. I've got uh I've got a bunch of different ones. I've got a axial the race. I've got the race. I've got a G made sawback. You know. I've got that one there I just showed you. I've even got a Max Stone 10 crawler. I've got the Red Cat. They're uh crawler that they have and uh put a custom body on it hold on a second
There you go, Pevy. There's my red Everest 10. Bull Gear RC videos. I don't think I've seen your G-Made. I've got videos up on YouTube of it. It's cool, man. It's got the driver in there and his arms hooked to the steering wheel and it's got a servo. So when you drive it, he sits there and does this. He sits there and the steering wheel actually turns. I love my G-Made Sawback. But this is my Everest 10 by Red Cat. Peavy. That's one of my crawlers. No, it's not the Grave Digger body. It looks on the order of the Grave Digger body, but it's it's not the Grave Digger body. I liked it because it's something different. Nobody was running one of those on a crawler at the time. There is my G-Mate Sawback. It's got metal front bumpers. Metal rear bumper. Yeah, it is a little bit larger. Because you look at the figures you put in them, they're more like a 10 or 12 inch figure. As you can see, it's got the metal bumper at the back. It's got a whip antenna. And then, he's got his little gym bag, extra pair of shoes, fire extinguisher, a canteen back here. He's got a wrench back here. He's got a knife over here on the passenger seat. Some little glow sticks in the front floorboard. And there's the driver. Got his shades on, got his jacket on. He's got binoculars up front beside him in the seat. He's even got a water bottle here. And a, C, a little CB light radio right there beside it. But yeah, Bull Gear RC video. You see how tall he is. He's so tall that his feet actually stick out right under there. His feet came through the floor. There they are. There's his shoe right there. <laughs> you had to cut out just a little bit of the floor to let his tip let his toes stick out yeah metal axle all that that's a custom that's a custom metal skid plate metal axles and he changed the, the drive shafts have been changed over they're made by Jum, Jumfac so those are customized as well and as you can see you don't see no body no body clips the body clips from underneath. Down here and under here. Flint stoning it laughing out loud. Well, if you want a cool driver, sometimes you gotta you gotta have stuff done up a little differently. But yeah, Bull Gear was saying he had never seen this on my channel. And I told him that I've got a couple of videos of this on my channel. That he can have a look at. I love my G-Mate Sawback. And right there it says. If you can read this. Flip me over. But. Uh, this is a. This is a heavy truck. This is the heaviness of a. Of a big race. That's how heavy it is. Now, the weird thing is, Massive Cloud, 
I got that one used for what it costs just for the kit to build one. Actually, that one was $10 cheaper than what a kit to build one of them is. And I got that one completely built. Yeah, and so I'm like, can't complain. I didn't, I didn't build it. I didn't customize it. The only thing I had to do is I had to fix the front, two of the front lights. Two of the front lights wasn't working when I got it. A full size had an 80 inch wheelbase, so like one tenth would have an 80 inch wheelbase. I'll have to check that. I'll have to get get a ruler and just run it across, see how long the actual wheelbase is. A lot of people call it uh like one one ninth or one eighth, you know, scale, you know, because it is they're pretty big. I mean, they're not as that's like a race. A race doesn't look one tenth scale. You look at the race and set that up beside you set up a race besides what to me it calls a one tenth CCO one. You put a unimog one tenth scale up beside a race. It's like night and day. You know, it makes that one tenth CCO one makes that thing look like it's you know like one fourteenth compared to that big old race. Them race are huge. When you grab a ruler real quick, have you ever heard of those RC gas power boats? There's a YouTube video of the gas power boats running by another YouTuber. Yeah, they sound good. They just they're they're harder to tune because every season you got to mess with the tuning on them because they're going to run a little bit different depending on the weather. You know, and then if you live in a a real real busy community, if you got a loud RC car. You're gonna get complaints from neighbors if you're in a you know real heavy subdivision. It's got a lot of people in it. They're gonna be like, "Man, this guy keeps running that thing, waking the people up, waking my baby up, waking the dogs, making them bark." You know, that's the only thing bad about a gas one. If I got me a gas one, I'd have to find me like an old empty construction lot that I could go run a nitro at. Yeah, people complain. Cause it sounds like a weed eater running wide open up, up and down the road. If I ever got me a nitro, it would have to be something that I could find me an old empty field that I could go run it in or in a, a construction site that hasn't gone very far yet. And then they're, they're not even there. They're not working or anything. It's just getting ready to be a construction site. And you go out there and you run it and have some fun and rip it up. Cause I love the sound of a nitro. True, no one complains with electric. And you don't worry, have to worry about any kind of pollution or anything. No noise pollution. No oil leaking possibly from the boat or car. No gas leaking from them. But don't get me wrong, I still would love to have a nitro car. I don't really care for no nitro boat. But I would love to have a nitro car if I knew I could find a, a big 
like abandoned field that I could go run it in. Now, Bull Gear RC videos. If you're still here, my friend, I measured it. The Jeep has approximately from lug nut to lug nut to hold the wheels on, wheel nut, whatever you want to call it, 11 and a half inches. It's basically an 11 and a half inch wheelbase on that thing. So, just thought I'd throw that at you. 11 and a half inch wheelbase. Basically, from the center of the rim to center of the rim. Yeah, about a one seventh scale. I said I said one eight, one eight one night. I said it was somewhere along something bigger than a one tenth because that figure that's driving that thing is way bigger than what you have in a one tenth car. Everybody thinks, oh, you put the big seven-inch wrestler in your car, and he looks so big if you put him inside this car or this car. I've got a wrestler. Well, I've got two wrestlers inside my race, and they still don't look that big. It's this guy that's inside that Jeep. He's more like your – he looks more like your 10-inch or your 12-inch style figure. Like your uh, – what was it? The action figure Max Steel that you can get that's like I think like 12 inches. <clears throat> and his arms and all of his joints bend. And this guy looks like he's almost that size if you stood him up. But I know he's got to be a 10 or 12 inch guy. Because I you can look at the seven inch guy and put it up near him. He's like eight feet tall, laughing out loud. <laughs> He's definitely a tall dude, but he has to be to make that look right inside that vehicle. I know you, well, you may have saw it, you may not have saw it. I lost my little gas, the part that hooks onto the side where it makes it look like a gas, gas cap and everything. That piece got lost in a run I did. He's like eight feet tall, laughing loud. That's what she said. <laughs> but I lost the piece where the little gas door is and everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the one that goes on the tracks is TRX4, and I'm going to end up customizing it and fitting it up in there so that way I get my gas cap back. Because, you know, you can't buy just the parts for the body for the g made saw back. You just have to buy a whole new body. And I don't want to tear the thing apart, paint up a whole new body, and put it all back together just, just because of a gas cap being missing. Either that or I'll just film it from the front, the back, and from the other side. So that way nobody knows the gas cap's missing. It's almost my birthday, two weeks away or 11 days. My birthday was January 19th. Well, happy belated birthday, Massive Clouds. I didn't know that, my friend. I didn't know it was your birthday. And since I don't see you outside of here, it's not like I could, you know, really tell you. Happy birthday then, so happy belated birthday. I hope you had a good one. Is that why you got all the goodies that you just talked about from the fishing warehouse? That was all your birthday goodies? And uh, Pevy, putt guy, I saw what you said. It's your birthday in about two weeks or 11 days. I'll go ahead and say it. Happy early birthday. If I don't see you or talk to you before then. Yeah, laughing out loud for the most part. <laughs> but yeah, you know, happy birthday, guys. I got to get out of here later. All right, Bull Guy RC videos. You have a good one, my friend. Hope to see you next Tuesday. Take care. But yeah, Massive Clouds, you know, we were talking about these earlier. And this was, you know, my girlfriend was getting me something for Christmas. I was getting stuff for Christmas. And I was like, well, I'm going to get myself a little something cheap. And I went on, like I said, wish.com. And when I spotted these and they said, claim them for free, 
just pay the shipping. And I looked at the shipping and it was under $2. I'm like, well, for less than $2, I thought there was like five of them in a package. No, eight. Let me see if I can get them open again. We'll see. I didn't really do much with them when I pulled them out earlier. Other than show one. But I love the size. I think they would make good trailers on a jig. On a jig that's got the other stuff on it. And this is just trailing off the back. But if I got some smaller jigs, you could just use this on a jig. I mean, come on. I think that would just look good on a jig and have the hook come out the top if you could. One of those type jigs. They're flat underneath. Now, that's the stretchy. Just lightly stretching it without trying to break it. And they're pretty squishy. I could squish them about halfway in. So I really like the look of I don't know about salt content, but good God, you can smell the stuff they made them out of. They don't smell salty. They smell more like, you know, fresh, done up rubber or plastic, you know. Some of these might be a good idea. To, yeah, it'll last a while. Some of these might be a good idea when I get some extra money is get me a bottle of that spray. A certain kind of scent you can spray on, you know, spray it across that rubber body. Put them, in, put them back in here. Spray a little bit of that stuff in there with them. Just zip them back up. Leave them soaking in some of that, you know, scent stuff. Like overnight, you know, before I take them fishing one day. Maybe try that later time. I might buy some of that scent stuff. Put a little bit in here. Zip up the bag. Kind of shake it up and then just leave them soaking in it like overnight. And then, yeah, next day take them, put them on, go fish. But now I got something else to try out. Uh, I've never tried one. I've heard they work pretty good. But I want to. I don't want to try that from that bank. Not as much gunk and stuff there is to get hung up on bottom. I'd want to be out in my actual kayak and realistically. So that way I got more of a chance of maybe getting over there to it and trying to get it up without losing it. Because I got a feeling that other one that I showed y'all that I'm going to try next. I got a feeling since it's going to be underwater, there's a good chance I can hang it up and lose it. I ain't really worried about the frogs. Because, you know, they're top water. Unless I throw into a tree or into some brush sticking out of the water, I ain't really got to worry about the top water. I catch donkeys on chatter. <laughs> cool. I'm going to definitely have to try one. I think I've got one. If not, then I'm going to have to get one. Because I've heard a lot of good things about chatter baits. I think I have one in my tackle box, but if I don't, I'll definitely pick up at least one. So that way I've got one to try. We had that one guy say, I'm out, big big dog. I'm out. I'll be back in 10 minutes. I guess he got caught up in something he was doing or didn't want to come back. Either way, you know. But I am glad he mentioned, you know, getting me that Xbox controller to hook up to my laptop when I'm gaming. Which I had already thought about it. I just wasn't sure which game box controller I would need. Caught a three pound, five pound, and a six pound on it last week. Large mouth, of course. Wow. Hey, I ain't choosy. I'll take small mouth or loud or large mouth. I just want to catch bass. But I ain't really choosy. I'll take a crappy or brim. As long as I catch something, I could care less what it is, you know, as far as fish go. You know. Because I used to go striper fishing. And we'd get out there and we'd be striper fishing. And we'd catch a uh, gar. We'd get them old gar. Oh, nasty monsters. Yeah, we, we'd go down to what they call the dam. 
It's a place called Buzzard's Roost. And you'd go down to the dam, and the dam would be here, and you would throw up at the dam and let your whatever you were throwing go down, and then you'd get to hit and you'd come back up. And a lot of times you'd think you had a striper, and you'd get to fighting it, and you'd see that thing come up out of the water, and you'd see that long snout of that thing. You'd be like, come on, another gar. Now, if you're at a, now you could actually go to the regular state parks and you could see them running down south where, you know, in South Carolina here where I live. I've actually seen them running. I was on Lake Hartwell. I was out there camping one year and we were down there for a week and the gar were running pretty much the whole time I was there. They were scaring off all the panfish because, you know, Brim and Crappy, they don't really want to do anything when the gar's around, but get out of there. That's all they want to do is get up out of there. Because, you know, they're, they're easy target for a gar. Think about it, a little brim and crappy. That's an easy target for a gar. So I wasn't I wasn't doing anything. I mean, we were down there. We stayed for a week at Lake Cartwell. And for the whole week, I fished the whole time. I know I fished at least six out of the seven days we were there. I love to fish. Small mouse, but I lose too many expensive lures in the river. <laughs> but yeah, that's why I did a lot of uh, fishing with chicken livers, night crawlers, red worms, and crickets. Live bait for fish because you didn't lose that much expensive stuff. If you lose a hook, it ain't that expensive. If you lose a couple of weights, it ain't that expensive. If you lose a couple of bobbers, if you're fishing from the top, that's not that expensive. You can get a big old pack of bobbers for a little or nothing. But you lose a five or ten dollar lure, you, you're generally not happy. <laughs> Need to, needless to say, you know you're coming away from there like really. I just bought that lure. I paid eight ninety nine for that thing. Threw it out one time and lost it. I buy Ozark Trail crankbaits from Walmart to test new areas. Yeah. It's a good idea, man. You go up there and you buy the Ozark. Say you get it for 84 cent up to a dollar 84. And you've only spent less than two dollars for it. At least if you throw it out, you're not as bummed if you lose it. Whereas if you put that five dollar lure, that eight dollar, that ten dollar lure out there, and you lose it first throw. You're like, come on, man. How much gas in my vehicle that would have been? You know, <laughs> it makes you think about stuff like that. I put that much money into it. That could have been some a new spool of line for a reel. That could have been some gas in my car, you know, or something like that, you know. But yeah, I buy the cheaper lures basically because I know I'm going to lose some. So why not use cheaper ones? Yeah, because I, I have a habit of you know throwing too hard and end up throwing up into some trees or some bushes or I'm trying to get close to the brush from the water and I throw all the way up in it. You know, now once I got my kayak, that helped some because I got hung up one time in my kayak. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm in a kayak. I just laid the rod down in front of me. Paddled over there, got right up to it. Reached up there, broke the piece of branch off, pulled it into the boat with me, paddled back from there, and then unhooked my lure from it and went on about my business. I climbed three trees last week to retrieve the jigs. <laughs> I don't know. I'm at, I'm at the stage now. If I throw it up in a tree, if it ain't something that I can just walk up to, reach up there and break the branch now, I'm probably not climbing the tree for it. If I can't break the branch off or pull it free, it just gets cut loose, you know. But the good thing about fishing out of a boat and kayak, at least most of the time, if I throw up any brush, I can generally go get it. Just got to be careful when you come up upon that brush, you know, kind of watch out for snakes. Because, you know, you're paddling up to that brush. There ain't no telling what's under, in that brush, around it, you know. So I look out for snakes real good, come up there and kind of take my paddle. Kind of shake the brush a little bit. Then I get my. One time I used the paddle to bring the branch down to me. Got snapped the branch. Got my lure back in the boat. Unhooked it from the branch. 
And then I paddled on out to where I wanted to be and started throwing again. And I actually threw right back up in the same area. But this time I kind of pulled back on it a little bit, dropped the lure a couple, a foot or two in front of the brush and didn't lose it. I try and run my lures down the bank, but trees overhang all down it. True. If you got a lot of stuff hanging down, I try to get as close to that as I can get, but sometimes it's inevitable. You end up in what you're trying to get next to instead of in it. You end up in it anyway. And then it's like, oh man, come on. Did I just throw that there? Did I just lose that lure? And you're hoping you can get it back. And if you're generally, if you're on a bank, you're not generally too often getting them back. That's the good thing about a boat. Cause I used to, I used to watch people. I'd be on the bank and I'd throw somewhere and I'd get hung up and I'd pop my line and I'd lose it. I'd see another guy coming along fishing in his boat. He'd hang up in some brush and you'd see him just put the trolling motor down, troll over, reach over there, pull it loose from the branch, troll back a little bit and head off and go do what he had to do. I'm not as accurate with a bait caster, but I'm getting pretty good with it. Oh, I know I'm not accurate with a bait caster. There's no lie about that one. I still can't do the overhand. I just never could master that. That made me sell mine. Made me get rid of the one I had. Actually, I didn't sell it. I gave it away. I had a uh, one that I used. It was, uh, I think it was a seven foot one piece rod. Or a six and a half or seven foot one piece rod. And every time I threw overhead, Every time I did this, bird nest, every time, no matter what, what size the lure, no matter what, I couldn't get it dialed in for me. But now side arming it, you give me a good clearing, nothing on this side of me, nothing on this side, trees wise. I could take that thing and just come around and side arm it like that and just, zzz. I could throw it out there further than I could throw my spinning reel when I side-armed it, but the spots I fished were generally too confined, and I didn't have enough room on my left and right. I had to go out to an actual lake and fish in a wide open bank area where there ain't really no kind of brush. I had to throw it out there just to be able to throw it, you know, good. So I got rid of it. The only bait caster I have now is one that uh, my girlfriend's mom gave me. It belonged to her dad. When he passed away, she gave it to me. Because she said as much as me and him like fishing and everything, and we had we got along talking about fishing, that he would have liked me to have it, and she wanted me to have it. So I've still got that bait caster. I don't even use it. It's just so I can say, you know, sentimental. But if I ever bought a bait caster, still the only thing I've been able to be good at with the bait caster is side cast. This, that side arm in it. I wouldn't mind getting me one if I knew I could get one and get it dialed in. I couldn't overhand bomb cast it, but now with a few months, I hardly backlash. I don't backlash unless I'm getting 25 mile an hour wind in my face or I forget to set the tension when changing lure. See, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing that people don't realize, and I didn't realize it. When you use a bait caster, you got to change that tension. Unless you're putting on the same lure, but just a different color variation, you got to change that tension every time you switch those different lures. Oh, I got this soft body one on here. Oh, I got to change it and dial it to this. I got this on here. I got to change it and dial it to this. Whereas with a spinning reel, you just hook it on there and sling it. No matter what size it is, you know, you just sling it. You don't generally, you don't too often backlash a spinning reel. It's very rarely to get bird nests on a spinning reel. And I think that's one reason I stick with them. And I love them because you can get them wet and they still work like brand new. You take a Zebco 33 and you accidentally drop it in the lake. It ain't doing too much until it dries out. Spinning reel, I could stick it down in the lake and just hold it there for 10 minutes. Pull it up out of there throw it out and immediately reel back in with it and it worked fine because I've done it before. But bait caster, like I said, 
I didn't realize it when I first got it. And that really messed me up in the beginning. Because I didn't realize you had to change the tension with every different lure because of the weight differences. I used to just use spinning reel. And that's all. But a buddy got me into bait casting. And that's all I use 95% of the time now. But you know that side arming. I think it's easier to side arm. No matter what lure you got on there. To me it's just easier to. Some reason I don't know why it is. When you're side arming it. It just doesn't want to backlash. As much as it wants to backlash on the bomb. Overhead. That one it just wants to. Woof. Yeah. But I may later time. You know, it's been years since I had a baitcaster. I may later time try one, but I'd have to get used to dialing that knob up and down for all them different lures. Yeah. Now, now curiosity, because you know more about baitcasting than I do, because I, I just told you, I don't, I never really, I never got good at overhanding it. Okay. You said you have to change the tension every time you change different type lures. Especially overhanding it. Now, why is it that side arming it, if you forgot to change the tension, it still didn't backlash that much or didn't backlash at all? I could switch to a different lure and chunk it out there, side arm it, and would rarely see a backlash. But every time I would overhand it, <laughs> oh my God, and you're sitting there for 20 minutes. Or more filling with a bird's nest. And I could just be. That 20 minutes. I could have done thrown out. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 20 times. With a spinning reel. That's what pissed me off. And made me get rid of mine. Because every time I'd go overhand. To get a real reel. I mean I wanted that massive throw. From the bank. And I couldn't get it. Because it would backlash. And then I'd be sitting there. Cleaning that mess up. And you end up just throwing it on the ground. And grabbing a spinning rod. And going okay. I want to fish. I don't want to sit there and work on something. I want to fish. <laughs> you know? That's one reason I run trail trucks more than I run speed. Speed or bashing. Release points. And you were probably using too much strength. Oh, yeah. I sling. I do everything over what you need to do. I mean, when I tighten something up, I generally put it on so tight, I can't hardly get it back undone. When, I, when I'm tightening up the lugs on my wheels, when I go to take a wheel off and have a flat tire, I can't hardly get them off myself. Even though I put them on. But I put them on so tight and then the heat that got to them and made them even tighter. Yeah, release point could have been a big thing. On the overhand especially. Because, you know, you got to get just that right release. Well, that's it's kind of the same thing with spinning though. If you watch your release, where you release at, will get you a further throw because a lot of times you release way up here and that thing's straight up in the air and then drops down and it's only 10 20 feet in front of you whereas if you release at that right moment you go oh my god I almost went all the way across there was a couple times y'all didn't see it in the video because i didn't run the camera when i was doing that fishing session down there i reared back and i threw one time and i swear that i was only probably 15 feet from the other bank, I was slinging it because I was hitting the right release area. As you get used to it, you can start running less tension and breaks, and it allows you to hardly you much strength to lob it out. Well, if I get one, what I'll do is I'm only going to use it on my kayak or in a wide open spot because that spot you saw me at, I can't sidearm because the tree here on my left and trees right here on my leg. There ain't really much room to side on, and I'm not stepping out into the water just to be able to try to side on it. I would probably take it, get out on my kayak, and pitch it side on. That way, at least I get some good use out of it. You're still using it, and you can still do some good fishing with it, and you can get some pretty darn good throws from side arming. You know, I would use it that way first, and then slowly work on. If nothing else. Pick a certain bait that you like using that you've got like three or four colors of and just switch those lures. So, okay, I got a I got a yellow one, I got a green one, I got a blue one, I got a red one. I'm just gonna switch between these four lures, but with this and use all of them on this bait caster. That way, because I've got my tension set where I want it, 
and do more of that and keep your spin until you get used to it. If you put a lot of power into the initial burst of you releasing it, it causes it to spool to spin insanely fast. And what happens is your lure isn't going out fast enough and you get back slack in your line. Yep. I mean, I've seen them. I've had, I've even had the monster ones and I've had minimal ones. Now the minimal ones don't bother you that much because you can sit there while the lure is sinking to the bottom and just go do a little bit of this, grab the line and get it right back up and you're right back on top of it. Your lure is just now getting to the bottom and you're starting to reel it in because you don't got it all fixed. But some of them, you shunk that thing out there and that thing's sitting out here like this out of the reel and you're going, oh my God. And that lure is a lure that goes to the bottom and it's got like three sets of hooks on it. And you're going, you just hang your head down because nine times out of 10, it's done went down and your luck hung up in something completely on bottom, like a branch or something. And you start messing with that backlash and you're trying to get it back in and you end up having to cut it loose anyway. You're like, see, if that would have been a spinning reel, that might not would have happened or wouldn't have happened. If you buy another one, turn the brakes off and tighten your tension to where the lure doesn't fall when you press the button. In other words, you press the button. You don't want the lure to fall. You just want it to hang there. Press the button and then, okay, first you, you get, have it turned where it doesn't fall at all. And then you slowly just crank it until it just Kind of like that, just a real slow creeping fall to the ground. Because, yeah, if you mash that button and it just, then that's a problem. You want it to just. Slow roll. And once you get that part right, you got to try to get your brakes to 80 to 100%. You will not backlash, but it won't go really far. And then you got to fiddle with that as you get better at throwing it. You slowly take off a little bit of that break. So it falls just a little bit faster as you get more precise with throwing it, right? Should be able to cast it without thumbing it. Oh, in other words, you just mash the button. Let, let go of the button. Mash the button, let go of it, and just chunk it. You wouldn't have the thumb up there laying on the line. You'd mash the button, just pull your thumb up. Whereas you got to mash the button, you got to barely lay your thumb up there as you get better. Like I said, I may look into one later time. And I may, I may give it a try. But like I said, I'm probably going to just use it in my kayak. And if I find one bait that it throws exceptionally well, you know, really throws exceptionally well, that may be the main one I run on it. But as you learn it and get your thumbing down, you can slowly back your brakes off to down to 50%. Yeah. Like I said, I got pretty decent at sidearming one. And I was sitting there going, shoot, I kind of like this. I'm like, if I could ever get the throwing it overhead, Get the hang of that because man i've seen some people whip them things and it's like whew, you can throw them looks like for a mile you know compared to some of your spinning reels you throw them out it doesn't look like they're going that far and i'd see a bait caster thrown out in the same spot and the person go almost all the way across the lake then you can start running less tension to where when you press the button it instantly falls to the ground yeah, as you get better, get rid of some of the brakes and then get rid of some of your tension so it goes a little bit faster because you done got your release a little bit better. But like I said, I'll have to start back. Yeah, I run my tension so loose. I have play in my spool. Wow. That's definitely loose. And you run your brakes at about 40 now. Wow. I think 
I think I had the brakes on that one at about 70%. And then I had it where it was slow dropping. And that's when I was side arming it. And it was just zooming out there with about 70% brake. And I mean, it would, it would sling. Yeah, but if I get a backlash, it's a bad one. In other words, <clears throat> on a windy day, it's not a good rod and reel. And on a windy day, it's it's not as good of a rod and reel as a spinning reel. Which to me, all of them are pain in the butt when you when it's windy, because you're trying to sling it and you see them popping. You're trying to sling over there and it's blowing 15, 20 mile an hour wind, and it blows the line back towards you, and you end up throwing out 10 feet in front of you. I turned the tension up on windy days. What I'll do is if I do get another one, I'll pick a certain lure and get it set for that one. Get used to using that one. You know, try to protect, you know, get perfect. You know, get as good as you can get with that one. Get proficient with that one lure. And then maybe switch up to a different lure. Yeah, I get wind knots on my spinner and high winds. Yeah, I have done that some. Go to sling out and the wind would catch it and you get knots. And you're sitting there, and you're like, come on. You wonder why, you, if you didn't see it, you wonder why when you really is acting funny. Yeah. I've had that happen, too. Well, I was hoping, I was hoping Pickerel Hunter would have got on here tonight. But it doesn't look like he's available tonight or, you know, just decided not to join. I was hoping he would pop in for a little bit tonight. And we'd have him on here for a little bit. Wishing I was fishing. He didn't stay long. He popped on. Said, yeah. He's only missed. I think twice now. I think he's only missed two times. Wishing I was fishing didn't stay long though. You know, he popped on here. Said about the big catfish he caught. And then he said he caught it on a brim. A live brim. And everything. And then he bounced. You know. Bull gear. He stayed longer than that. Than either one of those. Uh, the other kid. That kept telling me about putting up his video. Pevy. Pevy. I think it was. He stayed a while. FPV. RC Video Productions. He popped on for the first time. Since I've been doing these. Yeah, that's what surprised me. Wishing I was fishing, got off of here, and we were actually talking about fishing off and on. You know, RC got through into it, but we were talking about fishing just as much as we were RC. You know, but these, I'm going to love giving these a try. These might move up to one of the top of the list things that I try. Like I said, I may, I may try one down the road, pick one up, give it a try. And what I'll do is I'll just pick one certain lure, like say a top water plug or something like that, and start with that. Because that top water plug, avoid braid if you do get a bait caster. Start out on monofilament. Get used to it on mono before you try to go to braid. Because I know what Pickerel Hunter, he runs, I think he runs braid on his bait caster. What I'll probably do, though, since we're talking about it, I'll probably start out with just regular line on it, you know, a good easy castable line, you know, good limp line. And then what I'll do is I'll just take a top water plug. And that, that's what that'll be for right off the bat. In other words, like my frog. I might use a frog. I might use my like hula popper type top water stuff. Any of my top water stuff. Either that or it's got to be something with a weed guard and something I ain't worried about hanging on bottom. That way if I do get that bird's nest, you know once you get it cleared and you get it back in, you still got your lure. If you throw on top, you bird nest it. 
you know, you can get your lure back if you're using top water. Fluoro, fluoro is just too expensive to learn on. You put fluorocarbon on all yours, but it's too expensive to learn on. In other words, you just get something like Strin or some whatever decent name and run on it in the beginning. And then when you get better at it, go to something else. It's more expensive. I used to love spider wire. That used to be my one of my main fishing lines. Yellow, the yeah, fluoro is sensitive. What do you think about spider wire? That used to be one of my favorites. I'd go buy like a four, four pound spider wire that had 10 pound strength. You get four pound, but it was as strong as 10 pound. Or you could get like eight and it was strong as like 20. If you think it puts a weak spot in the line, if you kink it. True. But it's good on spinning, spinning reels. Because I, ra I, ra I rarely kinked it. And what I would do just to make sure it didn't really break the line is I'd run spider wire, like say, I ran one that was, it was like a 10 pound thickness, but it was like 50 pound strength. Hi there. I ran a, what they call spider wire, it was 50 pound strength for catfishing. It was 50 pound strength. Oh, you're talking about the fluoro. If you get a kink in it, it makes it weak. But that, the spider wire, it's hard to make that weak. And if you get the right one, it's good throwing. I threw a 10-pound. That's what it was supposed to be. It was as thick as a 10-pound line, but it had 50-pound strength. And I threw that out for my big cats. And then what I would do is at the very bottom, I ran a liter of like a 10-pound regular line down to the hook so that way if i got hung up on the bottom of the lake reeling it back in all i lost was that leader because you couldn't you couldn't break the spider wire i'd hang that up and you'd almost bring in a tree i could not break it i'd hang it up in a tree and it'd be like it couldn't break straight so i had to just start putting a leader on the end so i could just break the leader loose the spider wire is strong and it had one that was called a fire line I used to use. It was a, a neon, a neon green, like neon yellow looking. Almost like this, but a little bit brighter yellow. And that fire line was real strong. I used to run that on some of my reels. I run 50 pound braid. Braid braid tends to dig into the braid on the spool. If you hook a big fish. Use a small braid, it really digs in. When you go to cast it, it will slow your lure down. Wow. Well, I've never used braid, to be honest. Never used braid. The only thing I've used is like, you know, your regular strand and your other name brands like that. Until I found spider wire. And then I started using the spider wire. And I've even got it in, I've got a four pound. It's a four pound equivalent, but has the strength of 10 pound. So see, you could put that on there and throw it like four pound line when you're fishing for like, you know, small mouth bass, brim, crappy. You could throw that out there like a four pound line, but yeah, it's got a 10 pound strength. So if you hook something a mite size bigger than what you were expecting to get, which is, you know, can happen. You ain't got to worry about it that much. I've got some of that too. I use sometimes. I use Power Pro Braid. Cool. But now, uh, that fire line, that was good stuff too. It was almost as strong as the spider wire, but it threw a little bit further. You get better castability with it, but it wasn't quite as strong as the spider wire. It's like a you know spider line. I had spider wire and have no complaints. Yeah, it's definitely not a bad line, and that that might be a good go between before going to braid. You were talking about if I got me a spinning a bait caster. If I got me a bait caster, start out with the mono. When I get a little bit better, then maybe go up to the spider wire 
and use that before I think about a braid. You know, spider wire would probably work a lot better on a bait caster for a newbie. You know, before you go to braid. Mono is way cheaper than braid and fluoro, so if you backlash, it's okay. Yeah. If you spend $5 on a spool and you go out there and you backlash it, it's not near as bad if you spent $20 or $30 on a spool. Yeah. That's like, there's this, uh, I used to run braid. I used to run braid. Yeah, I did run braid. I had braid on a uh, striper rod. I had a 10-foot rod. And it had it was a Daiwa Eliminator, a ten foot Daiwa Eliminator rod, and I had a Daiwa Regal reel. This is back when a striper fished, before I tore his shoulder out and had to have surgery on it. And I used to throw out for striper, and it had braid on there. That stuff was so expensive, and the reel was like this big, so it held like 400, 500 yards of line. So you had to buy a spool of the braid and a spool of the mono, and they'd spool the mono on first, and then they would put the braid on next. So that way you were throwing just braid out, because you couldn't throw far enough out to use up all your braid. And we let Bass Pro Shop do it for us. That's who did it for us. We'd let them put the mono on, and then tie on the braid, and do it. That way, if you ever had an issue, you had your receipt, they'd take care of it. And yeah, using a backing so you didn't have to because imagine trying to put four or five hundred yards of all braid on there. It was way more expensive than using that backing. You know, you go and put like 20 pound trialing strand here. Like say a 20 pound. And then you come on and you put like a 20 or or 30 pound braid on there with it. And then you throw out. That way them striper. They couldn't hardly break your line. And them gar, they had trouble trying to break it. So, but when I tore out my shoulder, I had surgery and I lost around 20% mobility in this shoulder. I gave up striper fishing after that. The good thing about braid is strong as hell, but the bad part is it has a zero stretch. So when setting the hook on, on back, you take a chance of ripping the hook out. Yeah, when you go to, because there's no give, you just rip it right out of the fish. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I used to I used to love striper fishing. Now that one, that's where you get me out there in the real cold weather. Mono and fluoro stretch so it doesn't rip the hook out. Well, that's what I liked about the Spider wire. I didn't have a whole lot of problem ripping the hooks out when I used spider wire. You know. I still trust it. I got a spool of it. I think, like I said, I think I've got a spool that I've never used. It's four pound. It's what it throws like. But it has ten pound strength. I've never used it yet. I haven't even opened the package. I hadn't decided what reel I wanted to put it on. Because it's not a very big amount that comes in the yeah, in the package for that. So you'd have to use it on a small reel that doesn't hold a lot of line. But, uh, yeah, I love my spider wire. But if you hang up somewhere, you're generally going to end up having to cut. If you can't get to it and undo it, you're going to generally have to cut that line. Because it's, it's hard to break that spider wire. I mean, you, you pull back. I know one time I tried to do this and flex with it. And the rod ended up breaking. Spider wire didn't give. The rod gave. You know, that's why I still believe in it. Like I said, I forgot that I had used braid on that striper rod. You can also use mono as a backing to braid to add that. And you use less braid so it saves you money. True. Well, you could probably do that with the spider. You could probably do that on the spider wire. Like, say, if you, yeah, money, 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 money. I knew what you were saying, even though it was misspelled. I didn't care. <laughs> ain't no biggie. We ain't doing a spelling bee. Uh, 
you could do that with the spider wire though. If you got a reel that holds 350 yards and say you bought a spool of spider wire and it was only 220. Run you on about a third or halfway with your regular, like say some trialene or some strand. Get your other on there. Spool it on the rest of the way. And there you go. But spider wire is not so expensive that I don't think you can afford to, you know, get a big enough spool that can, you know, do a reel. But if you do have, like, say, say you got a spool that uh holds 220 and the spider wire you bought only has 110, 120. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it a lot, man. I do these talks every Tuesday. Unless something happens and I'm sick or the internet's down. I'm on here every Tuesday night. I appreciate that, man. Like I said, I, when we get on here, we talk about RCs. We talk about gaming. We talk about fishing. Different things. I don't find, I don't fish much, but it might be worth looking into these lines to try. I got to go, but I'm glad I came across your channel. Going through your vids, they look like they will be entertaining. All right, man, you have a great one. Thanks for stopping by, and I appreciate the sub. And I hope you enjoy some of my videos. And get out there and give fishing a try. I'm sure there's something you'll, some part of it you'll find you like. I will try to make it when I can. See you. All right, man. You have a good one. Peace. Have a great night. Massive cloud says you can't see anyone. Yeah, man, he uh he posted on here that he doesn't fish much, but it might be worth looking into these lines to try. He's got to go, but he was glad he came across my channel. He was going through my videos and checking them out. Just me and chat laughing out loud. <laughs> and then he uh, said he just subbed. It's uh, Inquisitor, Inquisitor Zane is his name. He posted he posted two posts. Might be. Cause he's got three posts right here in, in between your posts. He had the first one talking about it. He didn't fish much. But he might try it. Then he said he subbed my channel. Come back and said that. And then he come back again and said he will try to make it when he can, because I told him, you know, I'm here every Tuesday. Oh, the last thing you saw was when he first popped in here and said, hi, but that's it. So you haven't called up to his last one, two, three posts. I'm going to pull the list down and see how far you are from it. He said hi there. And me and you have got about, you posted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You posted about 12 to 15 more comments before he popped on again. So, yeah, you might just be lagging. But he was there. <clears throat> oh, so, yeah, yeah, it was like I was just talking to myself. You were sitting there going, who's Marshall? Who's Budget Guy talking to? I don't see anything, <laughs> but yeah, he came on here, said he uh, doesn't fish much, but he may have to give it a try using some of the lines we've talked about. And he said he uh, came across my channel and went and looked through some of my vids and they look like they might entertain him. So he might give it a look. And he said he gave me a sub. So, hey, <laughs> you reloaded. Now you see him. Yeah. Internet. Sometimes it just, it's a little off, you know? Do, do you ever put up any videos? Just curious, or do you just watch? Huh? 
I seen one of the people talking sub to me. Cool. And I was like, oh shit, he's going to troll us both. Maybe you'll get lucky and it'll just be a sub. You know, every now and then I get lucky and it's just a sub. Then again, could get like I got last week. Remember, I only got one last week. I uploaded a few about seven, eight years ago. S send me a link to one of them just so I can have a look. When I was in the car audio. So you haven't never uploaded any fishing. So you got no fishing stuff, no RC stuff. Just car audio. Send me a link to one of them. Nothing else when I get off of here. Just car audio. Send me a link to one of them. I'll have a listen to it one day. You know, you can come on here, go to your go to your channel, get the link. You know, pull up your video, get the link up there, to, you know, copy that and bring it in here and just leave it in the comments. Post it. Post that link in the comments. Yeah. Shoot me a link to that. I'll take a look one day. My cousin used to, uh, years ago, my cousin used to compete in those in those competitions where you'd have the trucks boom, 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 with all that boom, boom in the truck. His whole bed, I think, was nothing but system. He had a cover over the top of the back of it, and the whole bed was nothing but system. So, shoot me a shoot me a link to it, and I'll have a look. Like I said, it may not be tonight. It might be you know the next day or so, but I'll have a look. Because one, you know, a lot of times when I get on the computer gaming or I get on my PlayStation three or four, I just get lost in it. There was one night I got on my PlayStation, and I was on there for eight hours straight, just barely wanting to get up and go to the bathroom because I was so into the game I was playing. And a lot of times when I get on my uh, online games, them two games, I get on there a while. But, well, you know, that was eight years ago. You go back and look at my first video I, I uploaded, and the camera quality ain't nowhere near what I've got it at now. I don't think the camera quality that I shot my videos on was as good as my webcam is now. I mean, it just didn't start out that good. But I had to buy what I could afford, and then as slowly as I could get a little bit better, I upgraded and got my camera quality better to where it's at now, you know, where I can actually, you know, I'm putting up respectable stuff. Responsibilities avoided, I was able to return. <laughs> Would restore the heck out of the phone's mic, laughing out loud. <laughs> oh, it ain't no problem, man. We, we were just talking about how different people put up videos, different people just come on here to watch videos, you know. And we were talking about how people start out and the camera quality might not have been good in the beginning, but slowly as they do their channel, they upgrade the camera and slowly get better, you know, with the camera quality. And I was telling them, you know, that my, my trail videos, you know, I've talked to the people about that. I generally had the best camera work on them. Had two 18-inch subs on 2,500-watt amp. Cool. Cool. So you beat the piss out of that truck, huh? My cousin, I think he, don't get me wrong, he, he would probably be mad as on, <clears throat> at me if I said the wrong truck. But I want to say it was either a Chevy S10 or the little Mazda, like B2000. It was one of those little small trucks. I know it was one of those two. It was probably the Chevy S10. And he had the cover over the back, and he had nothing but speakers in this thing and amps and stuff. And it was loud. It's one of those where the whole truck literally bounced and everything. He went to competitions, won trophies. I think once he got married and had kids, he traded that, ended up trading that truck off and getting something different. Had a three foot rip in the roof from the flex. Oof. 
know that thing had some money in it to be able to do all that, you know. But yeah, man, you get a chance. Shoot me a link. Shoot me a link to that video. Link, put me a link to a video in the you know comments. Just come back on here in a day or two with a link. And that way I can just go on there, click on the link, and go watch it. Damn cup holders would be full of water every time it rained. <laughs> oh, hey, that sounds like a car with a sunroof. You know, I've had plenty of cars that had sunroofs and they would start leaking. And oh my God, every time you stopped at a red light, whoosh, the rain would come flooding in the car and you're like, God, I hate a sunroof. But then you would get another car, a sportier car that would have a better sunroof. Just use duct tape. That is an option. I would go and buy the uh, sealant, kind of like caulking, but it was made for car. And I would just put that in there around the gasket, open the sunroof up, squirt that in there around the gasket. And then I would close the sunroof real quick and let it seal up when it dried. Sunroof never leaked again then. Couldn't open it anymore, but it didn't leak. I'll post on this video in a few days. And just click my name. Okay. I tried Gorilla Tape Flex Seal and Epoxy. Yeah. Nothing fixed it. Wow. Well, sunroof's a little bit easier to fix when it's just leaking around the seal. You know, most of that stuff right there, Flex Seal, Gorilla Tape, they would work on something like that. But you rip, you rip the roof. I mean, you know, that's kind of a problem. Just blew it back apart once I turned the system on. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, it was great chatting. I'm going to get off of here. Hope to chat with you next Tuesday. Y'all have a wonderful night. I was told to build a pole and to brace the roof, and I didn't. Lesson learned, huh? Now you wish you had. All right, man. Peace. Y'all have a great night. Hope to see y'all next Thursday. I mean, next Tuesday. My bad. Getting ahead of myself. Y'all have a great night. We out.